In this training, we're going to take a look at how you can style text color with automatic CSS. We'll look at using utility classes, using ACSS variables, as well as perhaps even having to write some custom code to change text color. Let's go ahead and uh, dive in. All right, so I'm going to start by adding a section here, and then I'm just going to get us some text going. So I'm going to add a heading, I'll add text, and then I will add a button just for good measure so it looks like a hero section. So this is a hero heading, and then I'm just going to use lorem ipsum here to quickly grab like little paragraph text. And I'm also going to add a button primary class so we can style this button up. And I'll just say that this is a call to action. And then I'm going to space everything out evenly with owl s. Okay, so, um, and let's actually sculpt our text a little bit with width m. Uh, let's try width l, because we don't want that stretching all the way across the screen. Okay, that looks better. So we've got a hero heading with hero text and a call to action. So let's talk about styling text. You can add a text class, and by the way, it's text double dash and then a color. And you have access to all of the colors and all of the shades in the automatic CSS system. If you're new to ACSS, if you go to the dashboard and you look at your colors tab, this is where you set your brand colors. So primary, secondary, accent, base, and shade. You can set them all here. And then automatic CSS is also gonna generate uh, six shades for you. I believe it's six. It's a hover shade. You also have ultra light, light, medium, dark, and ultra dark. Yep, that's six. And um, you can change and adjust all of your shades from this dashboard as well. So you can really dial in the color system to exactly your brand's needs or your website's needs or the design you're working from and uh, you know so on and so forth. So when you're creating text colors in automatic CSS, or you're styling the color of text, you're gonna be using the text classes. It's text double dash, and then it's the name of the color or the name of the color with the shade. It's very, very semantically accurate. So once you've used this system for you know a week, right, two weeks, all of these colors are gonna be in your head. All of the shade variations are gonna be in your head. You're never gonna to have to reference anything. So for example, if I wanted this hero to be my primary color. Let's just go radical and we're going to say, I want my headings to be the same color as my buttons. I don't know why you would want that to be, but it would be text double dash primary. And suddenly you have your primary colored heading. Doesn't matter if this is actual body text or a heading. In ACSS, it's all text. It all falls under the text double dash classes. So there's no heading color classes or anything like that. It's all text. Very, very simple. Let's take that off and let's see what we would do with a shade. So I'll do text primary dash, and then I put the name of a shade. If you see this comp right here, there's actually seven, I forgot about it. Um, you get the complementary color generated as well. So whatever the complementary color is to the primary, you're gonna be able to, to use that if you wanted to. Um, I'm gonna take a look at shades though. So we're gonna do text primary, and then maybe I want this to be the medium shade right? It's ultra light, light, medium, dark, and ultra dark. Once you've got that down, it's the same for every single color. So text primary medium would give me that. And then text primary dark would give me the dark version. And then I can remove that and I can say text primary ultra dark. That would give me a very, very dark version of that color. I can go the opposite way. Text primary light gives me a light version. And then I can do ultra light text primary ultra light, gives me a very light version, which you wouldn't want to do on white background because uh, your contrast ratios are going to be off. So that's one way to style text. You take a text class and you put it right on an element. But here's a cool thing. You can actually style all of the text in a container simply by putting the text color class on that container. So for this, I'm going to duplicate. We're going to have a second section down here. And on this section, I'm gonna use a BG class to change the background color. We're gonna do base ultra dark. I want something really, really dark. And you're gonna notice that my text blends in. Now, would it be efficient if I wanted this text to be white, for example, which is another color you automatically have access to by default. It's part of the shade family uh, in your colors. So shade is, is black. Um, quick tip here for your shades. If you adjust this color, some people like um, this controls all of your grays as well. Some people like a little blue tint in their grays or maybe a little purple tint in their grays or whatever their, their feel is, right? 
And so we give you the ability to go customize this, but black and white, even though they're in the shade family, will not change. Black is always black and white is always white. The only thing that'll change is the grays in between. So you always have access to white text if you want it, or a white background or black text or a black background or whatever with text classes and background classes and all of that. So let's say, let's just ask a question. I've got two different elements here. Is it more efficient to add a class to each of these elements or to add a single class to this entire container? It's obviously more efficient to add a single class to the entire container, right? So I can do that. Text white gives me white text all throughout that container. Everywhere I use text in this container, like I come in here and I decide, you know what? I want another heading. Well, there's my other heading and it's automatically white. It's inheriting the color from the container. So that is a very important concept to understand. Here's another layer to that concept. You can absolutely still override any of these. If I click on the heading and I go to text primary, everything else stays white, but my heading turns to primary. If I wanted a secondary colored heading, I could change it to secondary. If I wanted my site's accent color, let's do text accent, I get the accent color for my website. So all of this is available to you. Now watch this. We can actually, and this is where the shades come in very, very, very handy. Remember, I used a base shade for this background. It was base ultra dark, the ultra dark version of my base color. So if I do a light version of my base color instead of white, that actually might look really good. So I can come in here and take off the text white class off my section, and I can say text base light. And now I get light text but it's not white. It's not screaming at you and boring that says this is white. It actually is in the same color family. And so it looks very cohesive. What if I wanted the text to be even lighter than the heading? Maybe I like this heading to be um, base light, but I want this text to be even lighter. No problem. I have text base ultra light and that will make it even brighter. It's not, it looks almost white but it's not quite white. It's got a little tint of that base color in it. And so this helps you because you have access to all of these shades, you can really create very cohesive designs. And when good designers are giving you designs, they're gonna do stuff like this, right? Like they're gonna use a little tint of the base color in a base colored section to make the colors all work together and feel like they're one cohesive unit versus just going really boring and saying, black text if it's dark, white text if it's light, right? You can really, really dial this stuff in. So that's an example of how to use text classes on a container versus on individual items. What if this was very long text? Let me take this part out here and say that it was like multiple paragraphs. Can you change the color of one of these paragraphs while leaving the others the way that they were? Absolutely. So in Oxygen, you simply highlight the text that you wanna change, hit the span button, and it's gonna make it effectively its own element. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an element that you can actually click. You can see it in the structure panel over here. Um, so let me go ahead and click here. There it is, it highlights my span element. And then I can add a class to it just like I have everything else. So here I can do text accent and that makes that intro paragraph my site's accent color. And you can use again, whatever color that you wanna use here. So that is very helpful as well. Now let's talk about custom classes. And if we have to create a custom element, which is very smart, you know, if you're creating something like a card, let me add a section here. Let me add a div and let's add a little, let's just whip up a quick grid, right? So we're gonna do grid three and then we'll do grid L2 and then we'll do grid M1. Watch my grid tutorial if you wanna know how to create grids, but I basically just created a three column responsive grid and I'm gonna put a div inside of it and that div is gonna be a card and I'm gonna call this a test card because this is just a test, this is just a training. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is put some elements inside of here, like a heading and like text and like a button. And you see how quickly I'm whipping these things up because I'm using automatic CSS, classes, uh, and then now I'm gonna show you variables so that we can have global control over elements. First, I want this to be an H3. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is on this entire test card, I'm just gonna quickly add some padding. Now, you're gonna get a, you know, you're gonna see a lot of overlap in these trainings, right? This is a text color training, but I have to style other things in order to get there. And I don't want to abandon best practices. 
So you're gonna see overlap in a lot of the techniques. So I'm gonna use variables inside of our padding here. I'm gonna use our space variables. So we're gonna do var space L, and I'm just gonna apply that all. So we have L spacing, L padding inside every side of the card. Now I'm gonna come over to our um, effects and we'll do box shadow. I just wanna make sure that you, you guys can see this real quick. Um, we'll come down to like 15%. Now, I actually want to show you how we could use a variable here, um, but we'll do that in a second. So vertical offset is going to be 6, and then shadow blur, we can do thir uh, 40, 30, something like that. Um, okay, so let's do a variable here. We can do base ultra dark trans 20. And now I've actually used a ACSS variable to create my box shadow. That's pretty cool. Next thing I'm going to do here is borders. Border radius, I can tap into the automatic CSS radius system with radius M so that all my radiuses match nice and, and perfect. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to add some custom classes here. And I'll do a separate training on BIM and class naming conventions. But this is going to be test card heading. This is going to be test card body. And then this is going to be test card button. But because buttons are pretty much always the same, I'm also gonna slap a button primary class on here and we'll do a button small class so I can have small text. And this is gonna be our call to action. This is gonna be our card heading. And this is gonna be our body text, which I will just lorem ipsum once again. And then on this card text, just to make it look, well, it actually looks pretty decent. So I'm going to come in here to the card, test card body and just quickly put some variables here of space S, and then we'll do that on the bottom as well. Hopefully that's enough spacing. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I now have a nice custom element that I can fill out my grid with. And you know what? My grid needs a little gap action. So I'm gonna do gap of M. And now we have a fully responsive grid. Check this out. Let's go to the front end. And then I'll show you how we're going to use variables to style the text color here. Um, so there are my cards, and if I come in, you can see that we are responsive. Three columns, two columns, one column, it's all done for me, good to go. Okay, so the thing is here, I don't want this text to be whatever this default color is. I want to use a variable to change the text color. I'm not going to use a text class because that would defeat the purpose. I would not have global control if I used a text class here. This is a global element. So I need to use a variable attached to this custom class called test card heading, or I could do it for my entire test card. If I wanted all of the text in this to be my secondary color, I could come to typography, color, var, secondary, and all of the text and headings in my card are immediately going to go secondary. If I wanted them to be the dark version, I would tack on the word dark. I could change from secondary to base at any time I wanted to. I could change to primary. If I could type properly, primary, that gives me primary text. So that's changing all of the text in a card by putting the variable on the actual card itself. If I just wanna change the heading, I can come here and we'll do the secondary dark. I kinda of liked that. And then here with the body text, I can choose something different, but from that same family. So I can do var secondary medium as an example, and that gives me kind of lighter text. Now, if you wanted the medium and the dark to be closer together, what should you do? You should go to the automatic CSS dashboard, shades, and you should manipulate the lightness value of your shades and bring them closer together. You can dial this stuff in to get it exactly the way that you want. But by using variables and custom classes, now when the client comes and they say, hey, we actually want that card heading to be our accent color, well, watch all of them, right? I'm not gonna remove classes, add classes, remove classes, add classes. I created a custom class because I knew I needed global control. So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to change this to accent dark. Uh, let's just use the normal accent color. Look, they all change. Now my, my accent color is pretty light, so I would need dark or we could do um, base medium as an example. There you go, something radical. The point is that all of these are changing 
at the exact same time because I'm using custom classes and variables. And this is so powerful that I don't have to abandon the automatic CSS framework to create custom components, which in many frameworks, you may have to. You may very well have to abandon the, if it even has a color system, abandon the color system when you're creating a custom component because there are no variables for the colors, right? Automatic CSS gives you a variable for every color, every shade, every dark opacity, and every light opacity of every color. Every single color in the system is accessible through variables. And then when you're using classes, you have most of that available to you as well. We didn't add opacities for text because um, you should really be using lightness instead of opacities. Uh, but anyway, that's beside the point. So we've gone over pretty much everything related. Oh, let's do some custom CSS just so you can see that real quick. So this is different from custom classes, right? I'm going to remove this and I'm going to remove this from the body, this variable here. And we're going to go over to our style sheets and I'm going to go to my generic style sheet here and I'm going to target my, let's zoom in so you guys can read this and you guys can still see the cards over there. So I'm going to do test card and I'm going to, let's just do it on the entire card. So I'm going to do color and I'm going to do var and here's what's great about ACSS variables because they're semantic, you don't have to reference anything. If you were using oxygen's global colors, which you can reference using the color function, you would have to know the ID of the color, which is a number, a random number. And if you are developing multiple websites, these are almost impossible to memorize unless you're like a savant, right? Uh, you're like Doogie Hauser over here. Okay, I get it, but most of us aren't that, right? So like, what is the ID of the primary color? I don't know. So you have to stop what you're doing. You have to go over to manage settings, global styles, colors, Find the ID of the color you want. And if you got all your shades in there, I mean, you've got a lot of stuff to look through, right? Find the ID, come back to the style sheet, plug in the ID, maybe it's five, and then you finally get the color that you wanted. But now if you want the background to be a different color, guess what? You're taking a trip all the way back to Oxygen Global Settings, looking through the colors, finding the ID, coming back and plugging it in. That's nonsense, right? With automatic CSS, everything is semantically accurate. So if we do color and I know for a fact that, hey, and actually let's make this more specific. So let's just do the heading now and then we'll do the body separately. So I'm gonna create another one for body. Test card body, okay, perfect. So now I want the heading, oh, and we'll just do the test card in general with a background, okay. So this is how easy it is when you know semantically accurate names for colors. So we're gonna do background color on the card is gonna be var uh, secondary dark. And so now I immediately have a secondary dark card. And on the heading, I want the color to be var secondary. That's gonna give me that secondary heading. And actually I want that to be the light version. So I'm gonna throw light on there. And then I can just copy this, come down for the body. I want the body to be secondary, ultra light, even lighter. And now I save and let's go take a look on the front end. We can zoom out again. So now I've done this with custom CSS. Even when writing custom CSS, I don't have to abandon automatic CSS. Everything is still available to me. Everything can still be controlled globally. It's, it just works, right? Um, that's how it's designed to work, to give you that power, to give you that control. Um, so if you're writing custom CSS, you have access to the variables. If you're using Oxygen Builder custom classes like we were earlier, you have access to the variables. You also have access to all of the utility classes for changing text color for one-off use cases section by section, right? Um, that is it. That's pretty much everything related to styling text color with automatic CSS. If you have any questions, drop comments below. Of course, there's the ACSS private community where you can get all the help and support you need. So see us there if you have any questions. All right, guys, I'm out. Peace.